Okay, now we want to talk about some desert landforms. And when we talked about rivers, we found that rivers made erosional landforms and then rivers made depositional landforms. So now we want to do the same thing for a desert. So what are some uh, desert erosional landforms? Well, the first one is going to be venifax. And so that's when you have you originally have a rock, maybe like this, and then the wind is coming from this direction, and then the wind is carrying sand, and it's going to blast this side of the rock so that it forms a facet, a smooth place that has been, all this rock has been eroded away. And so that's what's pictured there. Okay, you should also know what a yardang is. And a yardang is a series of parallel hills, and they are formed by a wind that is blowing in this direction. Okay, then another uh, desert landform is called deflation, and so that is where originally here's the surface of the, the ground, and then you have some kind of a bush. And now that bush is going to have roots that are holding the soil in place so that after a while the the level of the ground is eroded away so now here's the level of the ground but you ha now have this bush and it's like on top of a pedestal okay then you have uh, lag uh, deposits uh, which are going to be uh, pebbles uh, after all of the sand and the um, uh, uh, soil has been uh, eroded away, so you, now you just have um, larger pebbles on the ground. Okay, and then uh, a blowout. So you should be able to recognize these pictures on an exam and then match the picture with the name of the erosional landform. Okay, now let's talk about depositional landforms. So the first one is a talus slope, and you should recognize that from our lesson on mass wasting. So it's going to be where debris is coming off of the cliff face, and then it's piling up at the base of the cliff. Okay, you have alluvial fans, and so you should recognize that from our lesson on rivers. So this is where a river comes out of the mountains, and when it's in the mountains, it's a high energy river has a lot of energy, it can carry a lot of material. But when it empties onto the plane, it slows down and now it can no longer hold on to its load. And so it drops it as soon as it comes out of the mountains. Okay, then you've got playas, and so these are going to be uh, a evaporated lake. So a lake where the water has evaporated into the air and it's going to leave behind this uh, depositional structure. Okay, then you have desert landscapes and so for for example here are some desert landscapes found in mountainous regions and in particular I'd like for you to make sure that you can recognize a mesa and a butte for the exam. Okay, another uh, kind of uh, desert landscape is going to be desert pavement. Um, and this, so this is an area where sand is limited, and so uh, it's just going to be the, the bare rocks and pebbles there on the, the floor of the desert. Okay, and then you have sand dunes. I would like for you to be able to recognize the shapes of different sand dunes. And so in this chart here, we've got a graph, and over here is going to be the amount of sand that is available. So up at the top, this is where you have low amounts of sand available, and then down here at the bottom of the chart is where there's high amounts of sand. And so for example, when you normally think of like the Sahara Desert, you think of these gigantic sand dunes. And uh, so that is going to be down at the bottom of the chart where you have a very large amount of sand. But you can also have areas that are deserts, but they don't have a lot of sand. 
and so that's going to be up at the top of the chart. Now going across the bottom of the chart is going to be the wind, uh, wind direction. And so this is what is the direction that the wind is blowing in. So you'll notice that on this side over here is what happens if the wind is always blowing from some particular direction. And then on the other side, you have what happens if the wind changes. So sometimes the wind blows this way, sometimes the wind blows this way, and you notice that you can get different kinds of sand dunes. So if I give you a picture of these different kinds of sand dunes, would you be able to match the picture with the name and then also why did it come into being? So why does it look the way it does? And it has to do with how much sand do you have to work with and then what's the direction of the wind. Okay, and then let's finish off by talking about desertification. So the process by which an area turns into a desert. So that would mean uh, it's not a temperature thing, it's a moisture thing. So uh, why uh, would uh, an area start to uh, become more and more dry? Well, I want you to have an understanding of the Dust Bowl in uh, the Great Plains of North America during the 1930s. And so this was caused by a number of things. So there was no one thing that caused the Dust Bowl. It was a combination of things that caused it. So number one was farming. So people went in and they were farming the Great Plains. And as they would um, till the ground, they would be breaking up the root systems of the vegetation. And then that root system was what was holding the soil in place. Okay, then the next thing that happened was there was a prolonged drought in the, in the uh, Great Plains of North America during the 1930s, and that dried out the soil. So remember that soil moisture also helps to hold it together. But if that moisture is gone, then that, uh, that soil becomes very crumbly and, and uh, becomes powdery. And then the third thing that happened was there was a lot of wind storms during the 1930s. And so that wind was able to pick up that dry soil and it went up into the air and made these huge uh, dust clouds that covered entire cities. And so the question is now, how do you prevent uh, desert uh, vacation and so that's going to be uh, prevented by uh, having good uh, farming techniques that doesn't break up the soil as much okay by putting in wind breaks so that if you have if this is your field then what you can do is you could put in some wind breaks like this so that you still have the same surface area that you can farm, but now if the wind starts to blow, then the soil will be caught by this wind break, wind break over here, for example. So that's another thing that you could do to help uh, conserve the soil. Another thing that we found when we talked about river processes was that uh, we could terrace. So that, that would mean that instead, if this is the sideways view of your field and it's on a slope like this, then uh, there's a great uh, deal of a chance that uh, water can erode all of that material and carry it like that. So instead, if you could turn this into terraces like this, where it's flat, then you could farm on these flat areas and now there's less chance of erosion. So there's a number of things that you can do that will help to keep an area from becoming a desert. All right, so that concludes our review of deserts. So come back in just a moment and we'll do another lesson that is going to be or could be on your unit four uh, lecture exam.